Hello, wonderful people. Thank you all for the lovely comments on the last few episodes. I'm truly grateful for your support. This is episode seven, and I know many of you have been asking me to upload sooner. I want to share that I watch ICT live every day, and then I often rewatch at least once or twice, in some cases, to create these summaries. Plus, I also trade after the New York Open, so it gets delayed sometime. That said, I'll be making an effort to upload at least three episodes a week from now on. I'm also working on detailed notes and am considering turning them into a PDF soon. If you're interested, be sure to check the description so I don't miss you. Please like the video, leave your comments to help me improve the content, and share it with others. There's a lot of work that goes into these summaries, and your support really keeps me motivated to keep going. Thank you! Please like the video, leave your comments to help me improve the content, and share it with others. There's a lot of work that goes into these summaries, and your support really keeps me motivated to keep going. Thank you. We're looking at the weekly chart, and CPI News was just released at 8.30 a.m. today. ICT suggests that if you're planning to trade on days with high-impact news drivers like CPI, PPI, or non-farm payrolls, it's better to wait for the silver bullet opportunity between 10 and 11 a.m. Let's analyze the price action on the weekly chart. The price has filled the previous week's bearishness, leaving a large wick at the bottom, indicating potential upward movement. If the price is going to move higher, how far could it go? Take a look at the candle from July 22nd. The low of this candle marks the remaining inefficiency and the fair value gap, and the close and open of the following candle form a balanced price range. Once the price closes this fair value gap, the entire range becomes balanced, and ICT expects some rejection either from this area or from the 50% level of the wick. On the daily chart, we're now 10 to 15 handles away from the bottom of weekly candles low, so it's essential to mark this level. Moving on to the five minute chart, we can see the new day opening gap. The price initially dropped to the high of the new day opening gap, then moved above it. Here, there's an order block and the price retraced into it before rallying sharply and breaking above the London highs. These levels derived from the weekly chart are where our interest lies. The price has already moved significantly, so buying at this point isn't an option. We need to wait for more favorable conditions to make a bearish entry. For now, it's crucial to sit back and observe the price action. ICT made an important point about ignoring the initial high or low formed immediately after a major news release for liquidity purposes, because there is a lot of manipulation right after the news unfolds. The buy side liquidity has been purged, and now ICT wants to see how the price reacts to this fair value gap, because it will be influential. The price returned to the fair value gap and then pushed higher, establishing a new initial buy side level. ICT wanted the bullish candle that wicked through the initial buy side to act as an bearish order block. So far, the price is respecting the mean threshold of this order block. ICT wants the price to revisit the fair value gap and target the sell side liquidity, though he cautioned against having high expectations for this setup to fully play out. If the price moves above this short-term high, ICT will lose interest in the setup. Even if he's in the trade, he'll close it. And price did what ICT did not want to happen and took out the short-term high and keep pressing above. And for now, ICT wants to stay put and observe the price action and look for potential setups, but does not want to get into any trades. Looking at the price action closely, we've taken out the sell side liquidity and the price has created relative equal highs, which ICT dislikes. This situation signals both long and short opportunities and ICT views high probability trading environments as those with a clear bias, not when both long and short scenarios are present. This creates low probability conditions. As the price continues to make new highs, ICT returned to the daily chart and marked the new volume imbalance. ICT wants the fair value gap to remain open before reaching the volume imbalance. You might wonder when to consider that the fair value gap will stay open. Observe the price action here. Since the open, the price moved up, then went into consolidation. Before breaking out of the consolidation, 
it took out the sell side liquidity. Once it broke out of the consolidation, the first fair value gap formed afterward should remain open and act as a breakaway gap. This could have been an excellent entry for an institutional order flow entry drill with a target at the volume imbalance. However, we won't take this trade because the price has already moved significantly and we don't want to be buyers at the top of the range. Instead, we prefer to buy when the price is at a discount. Now, let's assume we're in a market condition where we're looking for buys. If we miss the entry with the institutional order flow entry drill, there's another opportunity. These three down close candles form an order block. What makes it a high probability order block is that we've taken out sell side liquidity. And these down close candles are just above the fair value gap with our target objective in sight. We'll place the Fibonacci retracement on the order block. Notably, none of the candles that retraced back to the order block closed above the 50% level. The price moved up to the volume imbalance and then retraced again to the top of the order block, right at 10 past 11, which is a macro time. Within the macro context, price will seek either liquidity or inefficiency. If we draw lines for another macro scenario, observe what happened. The price took the buy side liquidity, cleared the relative equal highs, retraced, created another high, and then came back to the volume imbalance, making another high within this macro structure. These markets operate with these specific generic macros. A macro is a small little program that unfolds in an algorithm. And what they are is basically a price run from one level to the next during a specific time of day. The core idea here is to emphasize the importance of discipline and understanding in trading, rather than getting swept away by emotions or the thrill of quick wins. The entry model is the catalyst that triggers a trade, essentially the signal or reasoning that makes a trader decide to enter the market. This decision should be based on logical reasoning, and the goal is to make a multiple greater than one of whatever is being risked, though the ratio need not be excessively high. It's crucial for traders, especially beginners, to avoid getting carried away by the initial adrenaline rush of seeing a trade move in their favor even if it's just a demo trade. The satisfaction of a successful trade can be addictive, leading to over-trading, which is detrimental in the long run. Instead, traders should focus on doing very little and being content with small, consistent gains. Maintaining emotional control is key. Trading should be boring and methodical, akin to running a business. The goal is to minimize emotional highs and lows, treating trades as routine operations rather than thrilling events. This approach helps in managing both exuberance and fear, which can cloud judgment. In summary, the essence of successful trading lies in being disciplined, unemotional, and content with steady progress, rather than constantly chasing the next big win. This mindset is what separates a professional approach from a reckless one. Please like the video, leave your comments to help me improve the content, and share it with others. There's a lot of work that goes into these summaries, and your support really keeps me motivated to keep going. Thank you.